Most of you guys are getting shadow work wrong and I'm going to help you by the end of this video to be able to figure out exactly how you need to do it. The first thing that we need to do, the biggest key to understand when it comes to shadow work is to make the unconscious conscious. If you're not doing that, you're not doing shadow work. We also need to think about the thing that has to happen, that must happen before the behavior starts. Whatever it is, you need to figure out what the behavior is that you want to change, what has to happen before the behavior starts. So I'm going to give you something that's really, really vulnerable for me. I'm going to take my armor off and be really transparent. This thing here that I have unearthed from myself because I'm trying to figure out a great metaphor for what you guys are missing when it comes to shadow work. Throughout my life, I have figured out that I don't like going to public bathrooms. The reason why I don't like going to public bathrooms is because stacked on trauma that happened when I was a child. I would go to school, to the public bathroom when I was at school as a child, and I would go pee, and then I would have the schoolyard bullies come in and kick me into the trough. I don't like going to the toilet at a trough. It makes me feel like an animal, and also all of the trauma that's been built up inside of my nervous system makes me want to go into a stall instead, or at least if I have to go, notice the language, I have to go pee at a urinal, it has to have one that has dividers next to it so that I don't have to feel vulnerable. So I don't have to worry about people coming up behind me and so I don't have to pee next to other guys. It's something that I still have to work through now. This is shadow work that I'm bringing to you guys as a really vulnerable piece to show just how fucking powerful this is. So because I know that there is a behavior that I have to do, I have to go pee. The thing that has to happen before I can go pee, I have to recognize in my body, oh, I need to pee. So if, say I'm at Pacific Fair at, uh, on the Gold Coast and I go, I need to pee. I will figure out what is the closest toilet to, in proximity to me. I will start moving myself towards there and I'm already going through the dialogue of the things that need to happen, the set criteria, the strategy, if you will, that has to happen before I can go pee. So the criteria needs to be, in my mind, I'm going through internal dialogue. I'm going through internal dialogue that's simultaneously coupled with an emotion. That emotion is anxiety, it's a little bit of fear, and it's embarrassment as well. I'm already feeling embarrassed before I have to go to the bathroom. So these three things have to happen all at once for me to go pee. I'm walking towards the bathroom, I'm rehearsing in my head how it has to happen. So I'm thinking about what the toilet has to look like, the quality of the toilet. So it's either going to be a stall where I can go in, shut the door, lift the lid and do my business, or it has to be a urinal that has dividers next to it. Once there, I'm rehearsing this in my head, then I can comfortably pee without being embarrassed, without being anxious, without having to worry about people coming up from behind and kicking me into the toilet like when I was a kid. A lot of guys actually have this problem where they have to go into a bathroom to be able to go pee, to be able to do their business instead of being out in the open. A lot of guys actually carry this shyness when it comes to peeing in a public place because they've been shamed for it, they've been you know, hurt, kicked into the urinal like I was as a child, and that has built up a coping mechanism, a maladaptive coping mechanism from their unconscious. Their unconscious is always trying to provide safety and security. So if you know that you're embarrassed when it comes to going to the toilet, you're worried about things happening like I am, you need to be able to make sure that you have a coping mechanism to be able to fix it. The way that we address it first is we've made the unconscious conscious. We've figured out what the behaviors are that has to happen before I can go to the bathroom. So the way that we start to change this is the moment that it pops its little head up, we reframe, notice the, ch uh, the choke in my throat. I actually don't want to do this because it's putting me too front and center. There's too much light of consciousness on the shadow right now. So the thing that has to happen, the must, the change piece, is I have to become aware of what is happening inside of my body and recognize I'm a 34 year old male, I know how to train, I'm trained, I know how to fight, I've got all of these things inside of my awareness to be able to keep me safe at all times. So my unconscious holding me back, my shadow holding me back, doesn't need to be there anymore. So I reframe this by saying, well, I'm safe, that's it. So if I'm safe and I'm telling myself and, and conditioning my nervous system to say that I'm safe, then I don't have to worry about the maladaptive coping mechanism anymore that was trying to keep me safe, do I? You can see there's a bit of conflict going on and the conflict inside of my body is I have to tell myself over and over and over and recondition it with a feeling of safety and security. I'm always going to be okay. So this is what shadow work is all about. You need to make the unconscious conscious and then create a change. It has to be a change in behavior. You need to figure out what are the steps in the strategy to get you to the end point, the desired end point, not the default end point that was created by your unconscious for you. 
And now because I've worked this out in real time in front of you guys, my nervous system is actually saying, okay, well, you're safe, you're at home, you actually need to pee right now. I didn't need to before this, but because I'm reconditioning my nervous system and I'm locking it in, much like a Tupperware lid locks in place, you know that sound snaps in place, like three, two, one, lock, like that, that's exactly right. So my body, my unconscious, my shadow has gone, oh, we're safe, we're good, we can go do this now. So that relationship that I have with my unconscious to be able to talk through my shadow, to be able to talk with my unconscious and say, we've got this, like I'm in charge. My mind isn't in control of me, I'm in control of my mind. So I hope that makes a lot more sense. So if you guys need a little bit of help around this, around creating useful strategies that are gonna help empower you to be able to understand that you can do be, have and experience anything that you want to and therefore choose and take massive action towards, DM me or send me an email, dave at risemovement.com.au. Link is down in the description.